here we are per request manual engine control setup and the things you want to look out for a little bit of a disclaimer if you're not experienced in RRB if you don't really know what you're doing yet do not think that this is going to make you a lot of a better pilot the increase in performance is very marginal and a lot of the best pilots don't even bother to use it if that tells you anything so it's not needed to become better and it's also not needed to be one of the best if you are still learning this game so you don't really have a big or a good grasp on the game itself mac will probably distract you more from the game than actually add to it making you a worse pilot because of using it so make sure you at least have a good understanding of the game and then start looking at mac and with that out of the way let's get right into the setup I'm today joined by Adam the Engineer, an avid Mac user, which is why I pulled him into this video. He's going to be explaining more of the plane specific things as well as the technicalities. And I'm really mostly going to be looking at the, the way to set it up, the keys you want to use and some things you really can't forget. You can check him out in the description. But if you know me, you probably already know him. So I'm not sure if this plug is going to do a lot. But if you haven't heard of him yet, feel free to check him out in the description as well as in the top right over here somewhere. So the first thing you want to do is you go to your little hamburger thing over here. You click on controls and you might think there is no manual engine controls. When I go over here, it only says toggle engine, which is of course pretty important to have, but that's not enough. You want to go to full real controls. And you don't have to worry because you don't actually have to use the full real controls because after you're done setting everything up, you can just press mouse aim again. Everything goes back to normal, but it will remember what you have set up here. And then you can use manual engine controls while using mouse aim. So what you want to do is, probably going to be starting up here, you can also just scroll all the way down, but clicking on the left here, manual engine control, is a little bit easier. And I recommend you to use the numpad. If you don't have a numpad, because you're playing on a, a console, or maybe you're playing on a, on a laptop, if you're on a console, I'm not too sure if you can actually do set this up if you have a, have a keyboard. If you're on a laptop, however, what you could do, for example, is use your right shift, and if you hold your right shift, you can use it like... A, a combination key so right shift and one right shift and two etc instead of the numpad which i have here so instead of numpad one you use right shift and one if that makes any sense if you have a numpad use that one the first thing you want to do is assign your engine control mode i have this on zero because it's easy to forget about because it's kind of in the, the bottom corner as well as with uh, the mixture because mixture is not modeled on most planes, so I can just kind of forget about it when it's on the plus and the enter on the right. Because they're kind of like separated from the rest of the block. The, the 1 to 9 keys, as well as the 2 on top, the num lock, the dash and the multiply, are much like the close together. And I use it in groups of 3. The mixture isn't really used a lot, so I kind of just leave it on the side and kind of forget about it. And that's one thing you do have to know. You need relative control turned on. Because right now, it's not turned on. And when I go to my plane over here first i press zero over there i turn my manual engine controls on and the things will pop up and now when i go to mixture control i press plus and it will instantly go to 120 and when i let go of it maybe you can hear my keys in the background when i let go of it it will instantly drop back down to the original value and the same goes with enter because it will go to zero percent when i press it because the relative control is disabled and this goes for all of the controls so when i go to mixture now I turn the relative control on. You can kind of forget about these. Don't make the sensitivity too high because it makes it kind of hard to uh, to pinpoint your exact percentage. Because right now, if I do this and I click it once, oh, it doesn't really matter. When I press it once, see how quickly it goes up. I, I try to click and it instantly goes down about two or four percent. So when I go down, or when I go back, and I turn the sensitivity a bit lower, say I put it on fifty percent. Sure, it's not as fast, but you don't use Mac in the long haul or in the short haul. So now when I press it, I can go with 1% increments, which makes it a lot easier to control. Of course, when I hold it down, it will still go relatively fast, so it doesn't really matter. So don't put your sensitivity too high. It makes it really hard to control your Mac and turn your relative control on. Without relative control, you're not going to go very far. And next up is the propeller pitch. So I have 9 on up, 7 on down, right is always up for me, left is always down for me. Makes it easier to remember. And then I also have the, the reset value on 7 and 9. I never used this before, but I have it set up just in case that one time I will need it. And you need to set up the toggle auto prop pitch. If you haven't set this up, if you need a prop feather, or you want to increase your drag, or maybe you have another, you have a thing, yeah, you're overheating, you want to decrease your, your pitch a little bit, so you, your engine rolls, runs a little bit cooler, 
that you need to be able to disable it. I have it on 8 because it's in between the two keys. So it's very easy to remember which one is the prop pitch. So when I go back now to my plane. There we go. Right now. Normally, when you press it, it will say this. Manual prop pitch control is unavailable as auto mode is enabled. And if you see this, you should be happy because not every plane has it. Like the Yak, some Italian planes, and you don't want to touch them. It's kind of annoying. It makes Mac annoying for me. Prop pitch is one of the reasons why I don't really run Mac. Because you need to run your prop pitch kind of like similar to your throttle. So say you run 90% throttle, you need 90% prop pitch. You run 50% throttle, you need 50% prop pitch. And of course there's a major exception to this rule. And that's called German planes. Say I'm going 300. Anywhere above 200 kph, if you go above 70% prop pitch on German planes, you might do this to your engine. So I turn on manual engine controls. I turn off automatic prop pitch. I go to 90% prop pitch maybe. And there goes my engine. Yeah. Engine died over revving and me turning manual engine controls back off is not going to increase my performance again. My engine is dead. Same thing goes for the 190. Don't touch them on 109s or 190s. Just keep it on auto pitch. Keep every plane on auto pitch that you can except for the exceptions like the P47. Because you're not going to recover from this. But when I disable auto key I press 8. And now I can go up and down because I have a relative control enabled. If it's doing that weird thing where it jumps to 100% and jumps to 50% when you decrease it, turn on your relative control. And right now I can just set it to whatever I want. And because this is the P47 and this is the exception to the rule, I want 85% prop pitch. And I want to bring my mixture up to 90% for that extra bit of performance. And now probably the most important thing, which is the radiators. So when I go to my manual engine controls, I go for the radiators, I have two things set up here. I have the radiator and the all radiator. Not every plane has both. Most planes only have the normal radiator. A lot of planes have both. But you don't really have to worry about it. I set them up in a way where I can press them together if I need to. So say 4 and 3 are right above each other. So it's very easy to just fing fat finger it, press it in the middle, and you press 6 and 3 at the same time to increase it, and 4 and 1 to decrease it. Of course you do want to keep in mind that some planes like the, the F4U has very little oil radiator drag, so I just recommend putting that thing up all the way, and then can just kind of mess with your with your normal radiator. So, same, same thing here, don't put your sensitivity too high, turn relative control on, and I just have 3 and 1. Again, 3 for going up, 1 for going down. And when I go for this one, it's the exact same. We have 4 and 6, 4 going up, uh, 4 going down, 6 going up. And then sensitivity, not too high. Relative control turned on. And you need to also turn this thing on. I have it on numpad 2. It's again in between the two radiator keys. And it's on the bottom, so it makes it easy to remember. So right now I have the two. So when I press it, this plane actually doesn't have it. So I'm just going to pull up another plane. Because when I do it with this one, it says no radiator, oh no auto radiator control. So I'm going to just jump to that plane real quick. So now we are in the F4U. And you can see the two things, the two intakes in the wing roots. These are the all radiators. And that's why I told you to assign them, se them separately. And this plane... As you can see, I turn it on, it says radiator 50% and then manual all radiator control is unavailable. And this is because the all radiator is automatic. So when I press 2, there you go. Now they both pop up and I can control the radiator and the all radiator separately. And because the all radiator provides so little drag, I can just put that one on 100%. And then this one I can put on whatever I feel like. If I press down on 2 again, the all radiator will go back to automatic and it will do whatever it wants. And I can still control this one separately as well. So it's up to you what you want to use. I recommend to just always turn your automatic radiators off. Because if you're going to keep them on, you might as well turn off your Mac altogether. As the input or the performance difference you're going to receive is even more minimal than it already is. And then for the last few things, these are not very important. At least one of them isn't. You got the turbochargers, but especially the RPM. Just keep this on. Do not touch the turbocharger. It's not worth your time. The supercharger, however, is of course important. The problem with the supercharger is of course that it's different for every vehicle. 
So you might want to look up your altitude on which you want to change. Uh, Adam is explaining this in a more practical way where you just look at your power and stuff. Uh, I also have a link in the description that has most of the altitudes you want to switch. Of course, it's a little bit outdated, so don't look at everything. Most of it is accurate, but not everything is. The altitudes, for the most part, are. So keep those in mind. And don't forget to change your, your gear when you go below or higher when you're in the old setting because you will lose out on a lot of performance. And that's basically it. There's still a few things. Magneto positions you can literally forget. And that's one thing. Misconception. Adam just told me this. Otherwise I would have misinformed you just as well. Toggle prop feathering is actually something you want to assign. I'm just going to do this because I didn't know this until two minutes ago. So I'm assigning it. For German planes it doesn't really matter. And for some planes it does. And I will show you what feathering is to begin with. Say I'm just flying around. Oh no. My... My engine got shot out. And I will now start decreasing speed relatively fast. Now if I turn on my manual engine control, I press the auto prop pitch off and I go to 0% look at my speed, it starts to go up. And you can see that my propeller is starting to slow down and it's, it's barely moving again. And when I turn my auto prop pitch back on, it starts to spin back up and you will see my speed starts to drop. This one doesn't have feathering control, which is why I'm also showing you this one. I will show you the f 4 b right after this as well. And the same story here. Say I'm flying my f 4 b boom, engine dies. This thing will hold about 260 in a line. So I turn my auto on my manual engine controls on and I put my prop pitch to 0%. And you will notice, I'm going to turn this one down as well, and you will notice that my propeller doesn't start spinning slowly like the German one did. Now when I press prop feathering, it starts to do that and I will start to build a little bit of extra speed. The difference on this plane is negligible, but I do recommend you to assign it nonetheless. Even if it's 1%, it might be the extra kilometer you needed to not crash into a tree. Which is of course, I think, a pretty, pretty good deal. Assigning one button to not ram into a tree. And another thing, just to keep it simple, and you just saw this change, because again, I kind of screwed them up. Because I had them on zero after additional key. To select the engines. If you do that every time you press 0 and 1, 0 and 2, 0 and 3, it shuts off your manual engine controls. So that doesn't work. So assign one of the keys you have left over. I have the minus one on the top right left over, so I press minus and then I press 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 and I can select a certain engine. If you use 6 engines, you're flying the BV238 and I will find you and I will ram you in battle. So what you want to do is you want to assign your manual engine controls, which you just simply press by pressing it. Then when I hold minus and I go to 1, you will see that on the top left the thing is grayed out and the first engine control is off on the bottom. You can, you can read that. So now when I throttle up, the, the, only the green one will start throttling up. And I will tell you in advance, I'm not touching any keyboard control. This might be helpful, say you, you're leaking on one engine and you want to keep the radiators closed on the working one. And you want to open them on the other one to bring it back home. This is by no means a way to win a dogfight. Because turning the trust all to one engine and going to a flat spin isn't going to get you very far most of the time I, I reckon. You can come up with your own scenario on why this might be helpful. But it's nice to at least have in your back pocket. In the very near future I will make a video on my normal controls as well. Which will explain in a relatively same fashion. We'll put it in the description. So look forward to that. And that's all I have for you today. I hope this helped a lot of you out. Make sure to turn on relative control. Make sure to check out Adam if you didn't already know him. And I will see you all relatively soon again.